few weeks and few months after you said, uh, you did have some support. You had your in-laws were close and then you also had some church support and community. How did people kind of come out and, and help you guys in those initial couple of weeks and months? Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I mean, from the very beginning at the emergency room, when we uh, were able to leave a few hours later, um, I put our youngest, I gave him a piggyback ride. I put him on my back. He had just like a little sock. We still had to go to the doctor and get a boot and all this stuff for his foot. Um, No crutches or anything. So I piggybacked him out of the emergency room. And when we got to the waiting area, there were like 10 or 12 people from our church that had driven out there um, to meet us. Yeah. And they were like in a, in a half circle, you know, just waiting to receive us. They're bawling, they're crying. Um, but they, they just enveloped us from that moment. And, uh, oh man, that meant, that meant the world. I went through the half circle. I hugged every single one of them and thanked them. You were Um, not expecting um, that to walk out and like, (gasps) no, that was really, I think that started just this, this idea of like, we're not going to be doing this alone. Um, and then, and then with our church and everything that, you know, they did a meal train and we had meals for like three months. It was amazing. And that's people that showed up to do, you know, our firewood and mow our lawns and do our laundry. And, um, one of the things that I never thought about in a situation like this, and I'm very, um, gentle now, as I minister to other widows is that people, when they come to help, it's, it's good for us to let go of any pretense. Mm -hmm. So when we go through trauma like that, we're very protective. I was very protective of my little family that was left, right? So our family of five had been demolished. Now I'm going to be really protective over our family of four. But when women want to come in and do our laundry, I could say, no, 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 no. Because I don't want them to see my messy room or, you know, I don't want them folding my socks and underwear, you know? Right. Right. But I think the best thing that I did was let go of all of it. Here's my finances. Here's my laundry. Here's my house. Here's my, the bed, you know, whatever, like, and it was humbling, but I was in so much pain and trying to take care of the kids that I let go. And I let all, all these people come in and I look back and I'm so thankful that I let go of some pride. Yeah. And just said, you know, uh, here it is. You know, we lived in a fixer upper and it was like, here's all the stuff, you know, but because I opened that door, tons of people came and helped us. And I just thank the Lord that he brought people to feed us and to care for us so that we, cause the, the, the work of grief is hard oh my gosh. and yeah. right. And it's every second. And so we were able to grieve and focus on that instead of me going, okay, what bills do tomorrow? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So, and that there's yeah. a pile of laundry that I have to deal with. And that is the least of my worries right now. Right. Like don't even have to, don't even want to think about cleaning this house. And yes, it is so true. Everything that you're saying, like you just want to have that time to grieve and hold your kids and be with, that's your focus. That's your focus. You don't need to worry about that other stuff. So if any widows are listening to this, just let that stuff go. If anybody's offering to help take it. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Because honestly, the people that step in and the times that I've stepped into other people's tragedy since then, they're not thinking, I mean, even if they walked into a totally messy house, or however dirty it may be, a thought may pop in their head like, okay, we have work to do, but Uh, they're there to bless you. They're not there to make judgment. They're not there to whatever. They're they're there to help you. It's something really beautiful that happens. I believe it's like the four women that God called to take care of my four men. They didn't expect anything in return. They, They didn't expect anything from us at all. They wanted to help that and as traumatic as it was for them, how hard it was for them to see what they saw. They, they did that because they wanted to help. I think people want, they want to step in and help you. Yeah. And I think that we, we shut people off because we don't want to be misunderstood or judged or what have you. I'm the same way, but when we let go of that and we allow people to step in and help, 
oh my word, it makes our life easier. And it's actually a blessing for them. I, I totally believe that they're so yeah. blessed in their, in their serving. Yeah. Because they just want to take away your pain. Yeah. They want to help in some way and take away your pain. And they know they can't do that again. Right. They, there's nothing they can say or do to take that pain away, but they can help you in other ways. Exactly. So let them. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, how long did you, did it take for you to kind of 